Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be talking about 10 different side hustles for high school students and college students and just teens in general. And by side hustle I just mean like things that you can do to make money that are not full-time 40 hour work week jobs. These all vary a lot in the level of flexibility and time commitment, so I'll try to provide a bit of characterization for what type of person each of these might be best for. Option number one is to sell your clothes or other items secondhand. This works especially well if you've recently decluttered your space and you just have some extra things that you weren't really using in the first place. So if you were planning to get rid of them anyways, you might as well try to make a little bit of money back. This kind of work is very flexible and doesn't take that much time commitment. You can just take pictures and list them on a reselling website whenever you have free time. And then all you have to do is sit there and wait for people to buy your things. Speaking of platforms for reselling things, this video is sponsored by Mercari. I've actually been reselling my clothes and other random things on that platform since about 2015. Mercari is one of the top digital marketplaces where you can sell items of pretty much all types. And they completely streamline the process for you. You just snap some pictures on your phone, write up a quick description and categorize the item. Then they take care of the entire transaction and making shipping labels. And all you do is package up your item and then drop it off. And they've recently rolled out a new feature that they wanted to pay me to tell you guys about called Mercari Now. This is their new same day delivery service, which of course makes it faster to get things. And it makes things easier for sellers because they don't even have to package their item or go to the post office. The way this works is they've partnered with Postmates to receive and deliver items for buyers and sellers who are near each other. The service is only available on the Mercari app and it's currently limited to San Francisco. Not only do buyers get the item faster, but this service makes things easier if you want to be selling items as well. Since the item is delivered on the same day, you also get paid on the same day. Additionally, you don't have to go to the post office and meet with a stranger to drop off your item, and you don't even have to use packaging to package it up. The current introductory price is $4.99. So if this same day shipping feature and any other details that I mentioned about the app sound interesting to you, I will have more information linked in the description so you can, you know, get started on selling your own items. And if you like, you can check out some of my things there, I guess. Moving on, idea number two is to make YouTube videos. Being a YouTuber myself, I hate calling myself a YouTuber because it makes me feel like a hashtag influencer when I'm really just a normal person who sits in my room and talks to myself. Um, but anyways, as a YouTuber, I don't really like to encourage other people to join the platform just to make money. It takes a lot of time and a lot of luck to start earning money, whether that be through monetized videos or sponsorships or affiliate links. Because unless you get super lucky with a huge viral hit on your first video, it takes a long time to build an audience and actually start getting views. But as I kind of mentioned earlier, YouTube is one of the most monetizable social media platforms. It has a lot of different options for you to earn money on it. We have AdSense, just the built-in ad platform. Whenever you see those embedded ads before or in the middle of a video, that's AdSense. We also have sponsored videos where a company like Mercari might pay a particular YouTuber to talk about their product. And there are things like affiliate links or affiliate codes. And the way this works is if a YouTuber discusses a product and they have a particular relationship with the company that produces that product, they might have access to links or codes, where if you click on that link or use their discount code and buy the product, the influencer will get a portion of the profits from that product. For example, if I link you to this flag that I have hanging on my wall and you bought the flag, for $20, I might get $2 in exchange. I think YouTube or social media influencing in general would be a good idea for you if you already like visual arts, like creating videos or taking photos, and you have a lot of time to invest before you anticipate seeing profits. Again, I don't like talking about social media as a way to profit, and that's certainly not how I see my relationship with making videos and talking to y'all but 
I can't deny that if you wanted to make money, you could do it on YouTube. If you already love creating 2D visual art, whether that be painting or photography or calligraphy, you can digitalize your best or favorite pieces or the things that were most popular among your friends or other students and sell them on the internet. There are some platforms like Creative Market where you can simply sell the assets themselves, like if you lettered some watercolor wreaths, converted them into JPEGs, and then uploaded them, people might just buy those JPEGs for download. Actually, I don't know why I said JPEG, PNG, gang, but... Or instead of directly selling those PNG files, you might upload them onto a platform like Redbubble. A platform like this will take your digital file, and then that company itself will print the art onto an object, like a t-shirt, a mug, a tote bag, a tapestry, and lots of other types of merchandise. If you wanted to get real fancy with it and probably increase your profit margins by quite a bit, you can print them yourself, whether that be directly communicating with the print shop to print them in bulk, or screen printing yourself at home. But that takes a lot more time and investment to, you know, make all of these products and then set up your digital listing site. My third idea is to make crafts to sell online. And this is a great option for you if you already like to do some sort of handicraft. Maybe you make crocheted stuffed animals, or perhaps you like to make macrame plant hangers like me. I don't sell mine online, but you get the idea. Maybe you'd print stickers using a Cricut, Cricut, Cricut machine, or sell those art printed on merchandise things that I mentioned earlier. As for where to sell these items, you could consider a platform that sets up the overall store, site, and transaction system for you, like Etsy, or you could set up your own online storefront. I mentioned Squarespace a lot on my channel. This video is not sponsored by Squarespace, but you could use a Squarespace website, or when it's safe to do so, you could set up a stand at a local in-person market. Besides earning an income off of something you already like to do, Starting an online store or brand will help you learn some online marketing skills, which can be useful for acquiring an internship or full-time job down the road. Idea number four is to sell photos to stock photo websites. If you like taking photos, you can just take some stock photo worthy photos and sell them to stock photo websites. You know, the options are pretty endless. You could take photos of an everyday object, like a mug, or you could take photos of absolutely absurd circumstances, like someone trying to decapitate their pet cat with an apple. You can sell to pretty much every major stock photo website, like Getty Images or Shutterstock. Besides being able to earn income off of your craft, it will also encourage you to get better to continue practicing and taking photos of different things in different circumstances. Option number five is to do some local services like babysitting or mowing lawns or walking dogs. You can advertise these services through neighborhood organizations. For example, my neighborhood really likes next door or you could put up posters at a local coffee shop. Additionally, you can also find a lot of sites that will allow you to seek out services and get matched with someone who is looking for something like this. For example, Rover.com is one for pet sitting, which matches pet sitters with pet owners who need pet sitting. And if you're starting to get real advanced and building up a reputation for yourself as an excellent lawnmower or snow shoveler or any of these things, you might even consider expanding into starting your own business for these tasks. These local service jobs are quite a bit less flexible in time commitment than most of the other jobs that I've most recently mentioned, because you have to sign yourself up to work on someone else's schedule. Of course, you still get to choose which jobs you sign yourself up for, but still, it's not quite as flexible, but if you're fairly friendly, competent enough at these skills, and have a lot of friends and connections in your neighborhood, this would be a great option. My next idea is tutoring, which works especially well for us students. Doesn't really work as well for younger teens, like high school freshmen or younger than that. But you know, if you're like a 12 year old prodigy, I'm sure some 
college freshman might need a tutor in multivariable calculus. There are quite a few options locally. For example, you can sign up at a larger tutoring organization that's located near you. Or you could work individually if you've got lots of connections to younger kids who might need help and their parents are willing to pay you to tutor them. Another great option to look into is foreign language tutoring because I'm gonna assume that all of us are fluent in at least one language. Although according to my high school, I'm fluent in zero languages because I didn't take the English portion of the California standardized test and I didn't submit my certifications in the other two languages that I speak. So therefore I'm fluent in no languages and I did not get the bilingual certification. But anyways, if you are not illiterate like I am apparently, you can tutor people online in any language that you're fluent in. There are lots of websites out there like Verbal Planet or Italki, and you can make up to $30 an hour on these types of online tutoring sites. If you're watching my videos, I'm going to assume you at least know some English, and English is a pretty lucrative language to teach these days. Tutoring is somewhat inflexible, just like local services, because you know, you have to coordinate your schedule with someone else's, especially for in-person tutoring. But again, you only have to sign yourself up for appointments that you have time for, so it's not too inflexible. Idea number eight is to manage the social media for a local small business. If you know of some small businesses that are near you, you can reach out to their management and ask if they're in need of someone to take care of their social media platforms. I know us freaking Zoomers have the impression that old people don't understand social media at all. And you'd be mostly right. That's why you as a young person who understands the internet is actually in quite high demand for these types of social media management positions. To start with, you'd want to demonstrate some proficiency with creating graphics or making videos and animations for social media. It also helps to be knowledgeable about online marketing, you know, those fancy terms about like SEO and like analytics and using AdWords and other platforms like those. Once you get well versed on the skills required to run a social media account, I'm sure there would be at least one business out there interested in taking you on. I can't really give any definitive statements about what the work would be like because it depends on the company that you work for. But I wouldn't anticipate it to be too rigid because you can make posts and then schedule them pretty much anytime and anywhere. Idea number nine is transcribing videos or audio on the internet. You can make about $15 to $25 per hour on platforms that will match you, a transcriptionist, with a person who has submitted something that they need transcripted. Some options are GoTranscript or Rev. This is great if you have good listening comprehension and can type very quickly. Very flexible, you can do it anytime and anywhere. And the last thing I want to discuss is being a driver slash shopper for DoorDash or Instacart. I didn't mention things like Uber or Lyft because you can't drive for a rideshare when you're a teen. If you're signed up as an Instacart driver, the app will tell you what to buy and where, and then you just pick it up from the store and drive it over to the person who ordered it. DoorDash, again, is a similar premise. I'm sure we've all used of or heard of it before. You just pick up the food from the restaurant and drive it over to the person who ordered it. This is kind of inflexible because although, yes, you can technically pick which gigs you want, they are pretty time sensitive. For example, I don't really think DoorDash orders are exactly going to be popping off at like 4 a.m., but you might have a lot more job opportunities for that around lunchtime or dinner time. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this word vomit listicle of a video. I upload new videos about life as a student every week, and I post photos of my notes and bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time! <laughs>